Grade one, the first one million dollars, a mile and a quarter, thoroughbreds three and up, all carrying 124 pounds. Here's the field now, jockey assignments and the closing odds. Tenor's way on the inside, 11 to one, has Eddie Delahousse. Darren go at a big price with Alex Solis. Siphon at six to one, the speed horse with David Flores. The great cigar at one to nine with his regular rider, Jerry Bailey. Luthier Fever, big price, but just by leaving the starting gate, he'll make $500,000. The only one to make the participation bonus of the MGM series. And dramatic goal on the outside at 25 to 1. Cigar trying to make 20th century North American racing history. No thoroughbred in this century has won 17 in a row. Tied with citation at 16, unbeaten since October of 1994. Let's go to the call with Trevor Demon from our Racing to the Breeders' Cup telecast. They roll set. There's the roar from the crowd. The Pacific Classic field is underway. Cigar began beautifully. He's in the blue cap, one from the outside, but as expected, Siphon is going to sprint up to lead him. And Siphon takes the early lead. Cigar is tracking him comfortably in second, and Dramatic Gold is right there in third. Dare and go at the rail is only three lengths off the leaders. The pace just a good one. They're not flying and they're not crawling. Tinner's way is back second last in the long shot. Luthia Fever is last. Ten lengths covers them as they go to the seven eighths and Siphon racing about three horses off the rail is going to carry Cigar wide into the turn. Siphon the leader, but Cigar is already right there, breathing down his neck in second. Dramatic Gold is another length and a quarter back in third. Dare and Go is down at the rail in fourth. These four lengths off the leaders. Eddie Dalahuse has Tinner's way, five lengths off them, and another five lengths back to the long shot with Theo Fever. They swing on to the back stretch, and Siphon is going to try to take them along as slow as he can. He leads them by just under a length. Cigar is right there between horses. Dramatic Gold is pestering Cigar throughout. He's right up alongside, and those three now have started to sprint away up front. It's four back to Dare and Go. Tinner's way has got to pick it up. He's nine off them, and Luthia Fever is distanced. They go to the quarter pole. Siphon at the rail. Cigar is right up alongside. Dramatic goal. Can keep up. They run to the quarter pole. Can Siphon try to run his biggest race of his life and keep Cigar away? Cigar's in front. Dare and go with a white cap is now looming a danger. Dare and go's going to look for the upset. Cigar takes the lead. Dare and go's got Dare Day morning. Cigar's got to dig deep. He's had a run very fast early and he can. Trainer Dick Mandela and the Presley Farm Connection celebrate while an all-time Del Mar track record crowd of 44,181 was stunned. The Great Cigar beaten three and a half lengths behind the 39 to one long shot. Darren Goh who paid 81.20. Darren Goh, a five-year-old son of Aladar, owned and bred by the Presley Farm in Kentucky, trained by Dick Mandela, ridden beautifully here by Alex Elise coming on the outside. So how did Cigar lose after 16 straight victories dating back to October of 1994? It was one of the very basics of racing, pace. The first quarter in 23, a killing second quarter in 22 and 4, got him to the half at 45 and 4. The next quarter mile went in 23 and 2, three quarters in 109 and 1, then 24 and 2 for a mile in 133 and 3. That just two fifths slower than the Del Mar mile track record. The final quarter, a slow 26 and 1. But by then, for Cigar, the damage had been done. I knew they had gone the, the half and 45 and change, and I knew it was too fast. And uh, watching it down the backside, I mean, it probably wasn't as much siphon being on the lead uh, that caused us to go as fast as we did. I believe Jerry would have backed up off a of siphon, and siphon obviously would have backed the pace up a little more. I think it was the horse that was lapped on the outside of us, Dramatic Gold, that really forced the entire issue and probably uh, was the deciding factor in the outcome of the race. I'm not certainly not uh, blaming it on him. I mean, I, like I said, if, if, if the blame comes my way, I'll take it because I'm the one that made the decision to, to let him stay up there and, and I didn't think it was a killer pace, although it was fairly quick. Uh, but I knew before the quarter pole, I knew really at, 
leaving the 3-8 pole, if anybody was going to run hard at me, uh, I was going to be in trouble today. You know, there's a million million ways to get beat, and there's only one way to win, and that's finish first. And today we didn't finish first, but uh, uh, he's still a great horse. I, I don't, I wouldn't back down from saying he rates up there with uh, all the best of them. Cigar came out of the race in good shape physically, but mentally he seemed to know that he had been beaten, even refusing his usual post-race peppermint from owner Alan Paulson. Cigar, whose $200,000 second place check makes him the first North American-based thoroughbred to ever go over the $9 million mark in earnings, was shipped back early Sunday morning to Saratoga. His next scheduled race, September 14th, Woodward Stakes at Belmont, to be featured live here on ESPN. Well, Cigar lost a race and got dropped from the ticket as well. Early in the week, Dole cigar tickets were everywhere in San Diego. Apparently, Mr. Dole found another running mate.